Hello, and welcome to Bio370 Vertebrate Zoology. My name is Dr. Dakota Rousey, and I will be uh, your instructor for this course, this session. Let me say that I am uh, really excited to be teaching this course. Um, this was my favorite course to take as an undergraduate, and so uh, having the opportunity to share uh, some of the uh, love and enthusiasm I have for vertebrate animals um, is really a privilege. So I'm, I'm looking forward to joining you uh, on this journey this semester. The overall goals for this course are twofold. Um, first is to be able to describe various uh, adaptations held by vertebrate animals for surviving and thriving in their environment. Um, and the second is to be able to use the fossil record to understand and understand the conditions that facilitated the success and turnover of various vertebrate groups. The reason why this course is important is because it provides an understanding of how life has adapted and persisted over time and gives us a fundamental fundamental understanding about how animals work. This course is also important for any career in biological sciences, ranging from biomed to wildlife biology, because at some level, all animals function in similar ways, and the way that these functions uh, occur can be extrapolated to other uh, groups of life. Over the course, there are five main ways to earn points. The first is through the Cogbooks platform, which is an online adaptive software uh, that offers multiple ways to engage with the material to embrace diverse learning preferences. This is used in lieu of a standard physical textbook, but has many of the same features um, that the textbook that's based off of uh, does. So this is, um, uh, this is based off of the uh, 10th edition of Vertebrate Life. So there are uh, recorded lectures as a part of this software, um, graphics, tables, supplementary texts, practice questions, practice quizzes, and activities. And together, this uh, material comprises what would be the main lecture component of a course offered in person or through hybrid format. I would encourage you to engage with the show more info link on most pages. Uh, which has sublinks to uh, both the, directly to the textbook and also to supplementary sources such as the primary literature. The way to earn points for the Cogbook platform is by completing modules on time. So there are two points for each submodule within each module. So for example, module one, which covers the foundations of vertebrate biodiversity, there are three submodules worth a total of six points. These module assignments are due weekly to help you stay on top of the material. The second way to earn points in this course is through uh, the six quizzes uh, offered throughout the semester. Uh, each quiz is worth 15 points, but the, only the top five scores are counted. So if you don't do well on a quiz or you have to miss one for some reason, um, then uh, you won't be penalized. So these quizzes are designed to be taken when you feel comfortable with the Cogbooks material and assess your lower order recall and basic understanding of the material. The next component of uh, being able to earn points in this course is through taking the three exams, which are worth 50 points each. These quizzes, or excuse me, these exams uh, engage with higher level uh, thinking uh, regarding the topics covered in the course. So the um, uh, best way to make sure that you are on track for succeeding on the exams is by following along with the lecture and module learning objectives as you're engaging with the Cogbooks material. So these lecture and module learning objectives are written out so you should be able to understand what it is that uh, uh, you can do when you complete uh, the material in that section of the course. So if you, if you find that you can uh, follow along with these learning, le or excuse me, learning objectives and complete them, uh, then you're probably in good shape for the exam. If not, the TI TAs and I are here to help you bridge that gap. Uh, in addition to the Cogbooks, quizzes, and exams, there are also two groups of assignments that you will be completing uh, for, for points in this course. The first are the dissections. There are eight different dissections for eight points each worth 64 points. Uh, these correspond to eight specimens uh, from various vertebrate groups ranging from cartilaginous fishes to mammals. 
Um, you can order your kits from Carolina, Carolina Biological Supply, and I would encourage you to do so as soon as you're able, if you haven't already, just to uh, ensure that the specimens arrive in time for you to perform the dissections. Uh, for these assignments, you will be graded based on your ability to identify the listed anatomical terms. And to do so, you will submit photos labeled with the 16 structures on each assignment corresponding to the various anatomical adaptations and features of these animals. So uh, these dissections are an important and unique opportunity to understand hands-on uh, the comparisons among different animal uh, groups in their internal and external morphology. This is my favorite part of the course by far, uh, being able to, to learn how uh, vertebrate animals work from the inside out um, is a really cool um, uh, opportunity. And to be able to do so from the comfort of your own living room or dining room, no less, that's pretty awesome. Okay, the final uh, category for uh, earning points in this course are through the assignments and critical thinking exercises. There are three of them and they're worth 15 points each. These are written assignments that will be graded by the TAs and myself. So um, in terms of how to be successful in the course, uh, particularly with regard to doing well on the exams, um, the, the first and probably foremost way that I would recommend doing so is to turn the lecture and module learning objectives into questions and then answering those questions. So uh, to prepare yourself for this, study the material using Cogbooks, take the quizzes, review the quizzes, look at the supplementary information on the Cogbooks and things that I, or excuse me, Cogbooks and things that I post as announcements, and then put all of that material away, uh, review the lecture and module learning objectives, turn those into questions, and then answer those questions without using notes as detailed as you can. If you find that this is relatively simple and straightforward, um, then you're likely in great shape for the exam. The second thing that I can suggest doing is uh, drawing, illustrating, and drafting diagrams. Uh, these aren't designed to be super artistic, but the act of putting the pencil to paper helps get those neurons firing um, and promotes long-term retention, such that if you are just copying a diagram of a, a particular cell type or of the layout of, of different organs in, um, in a given animal, then that's a great way to make sure that you are um, able to pull that information from your brain when it comes time for the exam. A third way that I would recommend uh, preparing for these exams is by teaching someone else. Um, and I, it's difficult to overstate how useful teaching someone else, just talking and verbalizing the different uh, aspects of the course are in promoting that long-term retention. In fact, that's exactly what I'm doing uh, with you all uh, this uh, session um, as I'm teaching this course. So um, talking with your you know, housemate, a friend, a family member, even your cat, um, about various aspects of the course is a great way for you to uh, realize what it is you understand well and um, help you find the gaps in your understanding that you can then go back to and visit um, in the Cogbooks material or uh, with myself or one of the TAs in our office hours. So um, if, uh, if you still find yourself needing these help or needing help after incorporating these strategies, don't hesitate to reach out at any time to myself or the TAs during office hours or through email. Um, and we will do our best to make sure that you uh, come away with the information that you need. Um, so keep in mind that this course is very fast paced. Um, what is often offered as ter in terms of like a semester long course has been condensed into about seven weeks. Um, so it's really important to stay on top of your schedule and do a little bit each day rather than trying to cram in uh, activities in like one day or like uh, or right at the end of the week. So I would recommend, uh, for instance, maybe doing the cog books material early on in the week and then performing the dissections later on or just interspersing the cog books and dissections um, and uh, other assignments across the week rather than doing it all on Thursday and Friday. Um, because uh, not only is it harder and more stressful to do it all in one sitting, but because you're not exposing yourself a little bit frequently across 
the span of several days, then you're less likely to retain the information that you're reading and, and hearing um, long term. So um, the other thing that I would recommend to do is to stay up to date with your due dates. Um, it's uh, really easy for things to slip under the radar given how fast paced this course is. So uh, making a second calendar that you can use to refer to um, your due dates is going to be really important. Um, in addition to uh, making sure that you're checking the Canvas shell regularly. Um, so in terms of ways to reach out uh, to myself and the TAs, um, and, uh, and your peer is to get help if you need it. Um, first, there is email. Um, I check my email regularly, the TAs will as well. Um, and together we can answer simple questions about the course um, and things like confirming that you uh, uh, are grasping a, a certain area that you're like not sure about. Um, you're welcome to reach out to us for that. That's, um, it, it works well for any sort of question, but I'd say it works best for simpler questions um, and stuff that isn't super urgent. So for, um, for other questions that are um, more in depth or you basically aren't sure where to start, that's where I would suggest office hours. Um, so uh, that way we can engage with you in either one-on-one -on -one or in small groups in uh, figuring out where the gaps lie and helping you bridge those gaps. Finally, uh, I would recommend using the discussion boards to your advantage. Um, these are a great way to get uh, information and help from your peers, other people in the course. Um, and so you can post something here and I check these discussion boards regularly and uh, may chime in if needed, but it's a great way for me to queue in uh, because if, if I see that someone is struggling and then a bunch of people reply to that person saying that they're struggling with the same thing, then that prompts me that I need to create a supplementary resource to help folks figure out what it is that's being discussed in the uh, course. Okay, so uh, the bottom line though, is that uh, myself and the TAs, we are here to help um, uh, if you run into problems. So let me close with just a little bit about my teaching philosophy and some other uh, minor areas with respect to the course. Um, so like I said, uh, uh, initially, this was the fa my absolute favorite course that I took as an undergrad. So I'm really thrilled for the opportunity to be able to uh, to teach it to you all as well. Um, and uh, it's it's been it's so important to me that like in, in my you know my titled position as the uh, vertebrate collection manager here at Arizona State University Natural History Collections, it's like it's what I do on a daily day uh, day to day basis. I'm performing these dissections, working with various vertebrate animals. Um, and so it's, um, it's great to be able to extend that into the online classroom. That being said, this is the first online course uh, that I have uh, taught, uh, uh, particularly an asynchronous online course. So I'm still learning about the various tools and resources available to me uh, in the Canvas platform. So I would encourage your um, and thank uh, in advance your uh, patience and uh, understanding as I'm uh, learning how to use this Canvas platform alongside uh, you all learning the material for the course. Um, and you have my commitment that I will extend that same patience and understanding to you. Um, finally, let me just say that um, I uh, respect and embrace um, uh, diversity of all uh, all of the students in my courses. Um, I think that you as an individual bring so much to uh, this course and I am grateful for, uh, I'm grateful for that. Um, I think that this is an area that we can all strive to do better in, um, but you have my commitment that if there is anything that I can do to better accommodate you, um, that I am, am happy to do so. And please just uh, reach out um, if there's something that I can do to, to support you. Um, and uh, with that, let me just say um, uh, that I'm looking forward to, to working with you in this course. Um, don't hesitate to reach out for any reason at all. Um, and thank you so much for watching this video. Um, and I wish you all the best for the semester. Thanks.